color forms. They stick like magic. Well, no, actually, they stick like science. Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe reviewer, and today I'm going to be taking a look at two licensed items, the 1982 and 1985 Color Forms play sets. Man, look at that great box art, eh? Well, that's all the time I have right now. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. All right, all right, fine, I'll do a proper review. But I'm telling you, it doesn't get much better than the box art. Let's take a look at the 1982 version first. Gotta kind of love that artwork. As a matter of fact, if you take a close look at the artwork, do you notice anything kind of strange? Probably not at first. But let's take a look at the example characters that they've used here, like the Flash here. Zap, and especially prominent Grunt. And now you can really see what they've gone and done here. Color Forms has actually declawed the G.I. Joes. They just um, redone the artwork so that none of them were holding weapons, or recognizable weapons, in the case of Flash, really. And I can kind of understand why they've gone and done that, because the G.I. Joe action figures and the toys in general are made for ages 5 and up. Basically, the age bracket is around 5 to 12, whereas color forms are generally marketed towards 3-year-olds and up, or 3 to 5-year-olds. So that's very a very, very young bracket, and I can kind of, you know, see why they would have gone and done that. But an even funnier part is that in the original Toy Fair catalog showing color forms for the first time, the company actually used the original Hasbro artwork, weapons and all. So I can kind of see them showing off this prototype to potential buyers or retailers. And the retailers are going, uh, wait a minute, these guys are holding weapons. I understand that they're military characters, but you can't sell this to babies. Parents will go nuts. So that's probably why the special artwork came about. Now let's take a look inside one of these sets. And this is generally how most color form sets actually look. You have these little inserts with your pieces on them, a shiny backboard to put those pieces on, and a manual to tell you how to stick something onto a flat surface. I'm not really sure why you need a manual for that, but well, there it is. And here's a look at the first sheet. The artwork is vaguely her trimpy, which is not surprising given that this is 1982 and a lot of the uh, comic book artwork is actually done by him. But you'll also notice another thing is that once again we have uh, a bit of declawing of G.I. Joe. The vamp here doesn't have a machine gun at the back. Snake Eyes looks like he's holding a, a rifle really or something. This. I suppose this is supposed to be a gun or something, but it's just so huge, it looks more like a camera. Looks like they snuck in the uh, side-mounted chain gun on the RAM, but I can I can see that that was sort of hidden in there. Probably looks like an engine to somebody who doesn't know anything about guns, or motorcycles, really. And here's the second one. Despite this being the Canadian version, and even made in Canada, we still have the U.S. flag in all its uh, red, pink, and blue glory. And once again, we have characters who look like they should have been holding weapons, but, well, aren't. And now let's take a look at the very, very shiny background. Of course, it has to be that shiny in order for the vinyl pieces to stick on there. Like magic. Wink, wink. Anyway, if you take a look at the artwork itself, it is very, very Herb Trimpy inspired, or probably actually is done by Herb Trimpy. His sort of uh, modern take on Jack Kirby's artwork. 
which is again understandable not only was he the comic book artist but he probably would have been attached to do these sort of licensed things in order to, to sort of keep the uh the art style consistent throughout all the products whether they were done by hasbro or not but have you noticed anything particular about this exciting background in order for you to put your little vinyl gi joes on I mean, we have a military helicopter and a Southeast Asian-style watchtower, but that's it. We have an exploding volcano. Uh, not sure why, but I mean, honestly, if you put your vinyl GI Joes in here, what are they doing? There's no cobras to fight against. There's no weapons to like fire at or or do anything with. You're you're basically just setting up your GI Joes in like an everyday scene. You've you've caught them in the middle of their day, basically, rather than in an exciting fight. And I think that's one of the problems when you sort of declaw these type of uh, military licensed products. You, you just sort of lose what makes it interesting to the customer in the first place. Is it bad that I try to do this scene seriously, but it still wound up being kind of weird and boring anyway? The 1982 Color Force playset is very common on the aftermarket because nobody bought it, because nobody could play with it. Well, Color Forms learned their lesson, and 1985 produced the second Color Forms playset, which returned the guns. Now, I just love the artwork for the boxes on both the 82 and 85 versions. I mean, I have these things on my walls like artwork. I don't usually set them up with the uh, vinyls because I'm not really into that. But just take a look at this artwork. This is something that the, um, the G.I. Joe Mountain, as it's often called, is artwork that they've often used on a lot of 1985 licensed products. But one thing that they always do, like on the official catalog is they usually cut off the ends because they usually like having like a square or something like that whereas the original artwork was kind of a kind of a wide piece of artwork so poor old quick kick and footloose often get cut off but here is actually i think the first time that you can actually get it in such a large scale almost uncut but let's let's take a look inside and yes, this one does fare a bit better than the original 1982 version, but it still does have a bit of funny quirks in it, too. Let's just take out one of the inserts. Around 1985, Color Forms was implementing full-color artwork for both their vinyl pieces and their backgrounds, but unfortunately, G.I. Joe license didn't quite get it just yet. Rather unfortunate, because, I mean... We still have that sort of uh, minimal coloring that Color Forms has been doing since the 1950s. Still, we've got our weapons back, and even more. They've implemented little firing effects, explosions, little boxes of ammo and stuff. It's actually rather well done. It still has that sort of uh, uh, almost cheesy type of uh, sticker play. But that's okay. I mean, we even have rifles for Lady J and Airtight, who the action figures didn't even come with that. So that's kind of cool. Take a look at the second one. This one holds mostly Cobra characters on there. Again, we have, like, sound effects even. It's all well and good, and not all that bad art-wise. I'm not really sure who did the artwork here. This might have been Herb Trimpy again, but I kind of doubt it because if you take a look at Snake Eyes, what do you think that is in the background? That's not timber. I'm sorry, but take a look at the uh, forelegs here. Those are not canine forelegs. Dogs don't bend their legs like that. This is like a goat or something. I don't think Herb Trimpy would have made a mistake like that. And once again, we have a little manual to tell us how to stick things onto a flat surface. Thank you very much for the obvious suggestions. And again, we have a very, very shiny board. But this time, we have an exciting backboard with actual explosions. We have vehicles 
flying in the background, vehicles which are actual G.I. Joe vehicles this time around. We even have a little Cobra vehicle, the water moccasin sneaking up onto a bridge. Now this is something that can be turned into something exciting. The biggest question that I have is, why do these sets even exist? I don't understand what Colorforms was thinking by licensing G.I. Joe. Now, other licenses I can totally understand. Comic license and even live action uh, television show licenses. I can totally understand why you would need a play set. And these were actually rather cheap. They went from about $4.99 to $5.99 or something like that. But G.I. Joe is an action figure line with multiple play sets. And they're all very physical. Uh, and G.I. Joe sort of warrants a very, um, very action-oriented play pattern. This is not action-oriented. This would have actually have been quite good if it was well-done artwork, but it isn't. It's just that flat 1950s-style uh, vinyl. And uh, Color Forms has been around since the 1950s and is still being produced today. As a matter of fact, there is actually a, a 1991 version of G.I. Joe Color Forms by Rose Art. It's not actual Color Forms. The 1985 version is actually quite hard to find. I don't think that a lot of the 85 version was actually produced, simply because these were on the shelves for a very long time. And I don't think retailers felt comfortable buying another version. And the 85 version would, would have been actually the more expensive one, because it is actually a type of a larger board. So I think they did, um, uh, the MSRP was like a, a dollar or something a bit more than what their average size was. This was the kind of like the average size of most of the Colorform play sets. I think Time Magazine actually named Colorform's uh, one of the top 100 toys of all time. And I kind of have to dispute that because to me, Colorform's is not a toy in a sense. It's more like an, an arts craft. And I can kind of see why this kind of appeals to parents buying this for very, very young kids. Honestly, the G.I. Joe license is probably not the best use of the color forms format. Let's take a look at the 1982 one verse and we have again our very shiny backboard with once yeah. well the biggest questions that I have is why do these sets stay tuned for next week when I do a full review of G.I. Joe Presto Magics